Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. And today we have three more news stories to tell, so I hope you're ready for a new portion of Crazy People. Let's get started. I do, sort of, but not like old boy things. Never thought I'd have anything to post here, but I do. This happened two nights ago. For a bit of background, I work part-time from home taking restaurant call-in orders for a particular Asian restaurant chain. I'm not affiliated with the restaurant in any manner other than my employer is contracted by the restaurant to take orders so that the restaurant staff aren't stuck on the phone all night. Some folks understand this, others don't. This particular jack wagon did not. On to the story. I answer the phone with my typical thank you for calling my restaurant line. Before I can even finish, dude barks out, I'm going to give you one chance to fix this or I'm going to get the authorities involved. With that kind of intro, it doesn't take a genius to know this one was going south. He then proceeds to demand that I tell him what his last order was. Understand, I'm there to take orders. I can't change orders, cancel orders, or even take large party type or catering orders. I'm only there to take orders from folks wanting to not have to cook dinner that night. This means I have no reason to have access to previous orders. I can't even see if a person made a previous order. The only way I know they have is because when the caller ID system reads their phone number, it also populates the name if they've called before. This boy's name was there. That's the extent of my knowledge of his previous transactions. I explained that I was not on site and therefore had no access to his order, but that I could transfer his call into the store and he could speak with someone that could possibly help him. Oh no. Instead, I'm full of BS and don't want to do anything to fix the effing mess you guys have made. Now, I've been in his shoes before. I get the frustration. However, refusing to listen to or believe a word the other person is saying wouldn't get my problems resolved. I'm sure you guys know. It didn't get his resolved either. He proceeds again to bark about having his bank statement in his hand and demand that I tell him what he ordered. Again, I tell him I cannot help him with that. He cussed me again and says, what can you do then? I just told you, sir, I can transfer you to the store where perhaps they can look up your order and do something to correct the situation. Keep in mind here, this guy never actually told me what was wrong. He just kept demanding his previous order to be read to him and that he had his bank statement in his hand. I assume he was overcharged in some manner, but really have no way to know. He barks and moans some more about how nobody is helping him and this is the worst customer service he's ever received in his life. All littered with colorful curse words that sometimes fit and sometimes did not. Again, I didn't immediately hang up, cursing or not, because if I can help, I'm going to let them vent a little and do what I can to help. After about three minutes of this dude's refusal to believe that I wasn't part of an Asian food conspiracy... He then began to verbally attack me personally. He asked what I was even there for, and again, I told him. I am the order line, sir. I can take food orders. For your problem, I would need to transfer you to the store. B.S. You're just a lying piece of crap. Such a worthless piece of crap. I've had it. I'm getting the authorities involved. You'll be hearing from the police. At this point, I simply said, have a good night, sir, and reached to hang up. He beat me to it by a second. So I held my tongue and tried to keep it professional, but I so wanted to say, look, a-hole, call whoever you want. I don't care. You're in Arizona. I'm in Oklahoma. Unless you can convince the FBI that your egg roll was that important, I highly doubt I'll be hearing from anyone about this. I just don't understand people. If you think this behavior deserves the title of Karen, you just haven't heard our next story yet. I do not work here, lady. This happened years ago. My dad's cousin Robert was visiting from Scotland for the first time. We live in Canada. He'd been taking turns staying at each of my dad's siblings that lived nearby. That day, he was staying with my parents. We had a nice lunch together at their home, but for dinner, we were going out to a nice restaurant. My mother, father, his cousin, my little bro, and I, two of my aunts and two of my uncles, so a pretty big party, we had to call ahead and make a reservation. The whole family had dressed nicely since we knew we were going somewhere nice for this special occasion. The restaurant where we were going was not the number one restaurant in the city, but it was pretty high end. One of my personal favorite places to eat. The whole staff was dressed nicely, but the manager and sommelier both wore suits. 
So we got to the restaurant about 15 minutes early. Our table was already ready, so we were seated right away. I was friends with the sommelier in particular and knew most of the staff pretty well, so I was talking to him a bit. We chatted about what wine they'd got in recently, and they'd picked up a large collection from an estate sale that I hadn't been able to attend myself. I ordered several bottles from this new collection for the table, then went to seat myself. The dinner rush was just starting as our waiter took our orders. Robert got up and headed for the bathroom, which our server pointed out for him. As he was coming back around the corner toward our table, a skinny young guy in a tacky suit snapped his fingers at Robert, who noticed and looked at him, surprised and sort of offended. The man was loud, very needlessly loud. This was a nice place. People were talking in muted tones. Rude young men. Hey! Hey you! Yes you! We're ready to order! Robert. Beg pardon, laddie? What are you going on about? Robert's accent was as thick as oatmeal. Rude young man. My order. Take my order. We're ready. It was about this moment Robert realized the rude young man thought he worked at the restaurant. Robert, I don't work here, laddie. The rude young man was having none of this. His immediate anger was clearly apparent as he stood up. This situation was getting out of hand. I and my little bro both got up from the table to go back up Robert. We almost got there the same time as the manager. Rude young man, now shouting. You can't treat me like this. Don't you know who I am? Robert was recoiling. Having heard so much about Canadian hospitality, he was floored by this rude young man. The floor manager stepped between Robert and his aggressor as Robert was stepping back and the rude young man. Floor manager. Sir, I don't know who you think you are, but your behavior is unacceptable. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Rude young man. I demand you fire this server. He was very rude. You can't treat me like this. My dad owns this place. I'll have your job. I'll have all your jobs. The guy was so loud that the chef had come out to see what was the matter. Dressed in black with a black heavy leather apron, heavy leather knife sheaths on each hip, hung on a belt around his waist, tattoos all over his arms and neck, muscular, and a little over six feet tall. Chef was quite an imposing figure, particularly with the angry look on his face. At this point, the whole restaurant was staring at the rude young man. Chef, in an aggressive but not overly loud yet commanding voice, This is over. You are out of here. Get up and get out now. Chef's command allowed no rebuke. The skinny little pissant looked terrified. He and his lady friend both got up, looking horrified, and rushed out of the restaurant. I thought he was going to make another comment as he fled, but he just scurried away. Several people cheered, others clapped as the chef retreated back to the kitchen. The excitement over, we ended up having a great rest of our meal. The floor manager ended up comping the whole meal, nearly two grand. Both my dad and I really wanted to pay, but he just refused to take our card, so we ended up leaving a big pile of cash on the table when we left. The following week, I went back to the place with a friend. The sommelier was just itching to dish the news. Turned out the rude young man's dad had indeed owned the restaurant. Part owner. He was a wealthy local landowner, businessman, and restaurateur. Unfortunately for that little pissant, his father had not been on his side at all when he tried to get everyone fired. Much to his dismay, his father instead took away his trust fund, the penthouse he was living in, and his car. Kid ended up having to get a job for the first time in his life. It's always nice to hear that. And our third story. No, I don't work here, but I can help you more than the employees ever could. Reading some of the posts here about the lighter side of things where people offer to help because they can reminded me of this incident from several years ago. Takes place in a local video game store. Think EB Games slash GameStop, but less overpriced. I usually prefer to shop here because of the lower prices for used games since they're actually reasonable and don't charge five bucks less than new for a game that's ancient. The staff are usually well versed in the world of games. I've had many a conversation with some regarding the games I like and what's coming soon, but on this day things were different. It's clear that the staff that were working belong to a clique that thinks Nintendo as a whole is a waste of time and actively try to stop people from buying anything Nintendo related. This pisses me off, since I see nothing wrong with enjoying Nintendo products, and especially since I've played Nintendo games since the 80s. In any case, I'm standing in front of the Wii U section of games, it's not large considering how mediocre the system sold in its lifetime. 
Now, this is before the Nintendo Switch was a thing, so the Wii U is all we had going aside from the 3DS. I'm browsing through the games they have to see if anything catches my interest, when I see a guy, probably in his 30s, looking both frustrated and confused. I asked him what was up, and he said he's trying to find games for his kids to play on their Wii U game together. Says the staff are useless in just telling him to buy a PlayStation or Xbox. Kids like Nintendo, so you can see the issue here. He said he wanted games with decent multiplayer so everyone can play. I looked over at the staff and wondered what was up their butt and proceeded to offer my recommendations for games he and his kids could enjoy. One of which is Nintendo Land, the pack-in title. He said since he got his system used, it lacked the pack-in game and at this point in time, for whatever reason, Nintendo Land was not too easy to find around here. Weird, but whatever. I tell him that a few minutes up the road there's another game store that a buddy of mine owns. He has a decent selection and usually has the game in stock. Upon hearing that, his eyes light up a bit and finally he has a good look at me and realizes I'm just a regular guy looking for games like him. He thanked me many times for helping him out. I just say it's all good, just wanted to point him in the right direction since the staff were crap at their jobs today. After that he left and I wished him luck. Hope he managed to find his games. Not only did you help that dude, he most likely got his game and made his kids happy. And thank you so much to everyone who watched the video all the way to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.